good to go ahead and start the recording. Got it. Cool. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, sit in and learn about Google Analytics 4. Super exciting topic. I'm sure that we're all here because we feel super prepared for the switch in 2023. Uh, just kidding, a little bit of sarcasm there. Um, GA4 has been coming up faster and faster uh, month over month as this year continues to fly by. So if you are here today, then you are here for a nice introduction training to GA4. We won't go over a lot of advanced settings today, but we will be going over the basics for installation, navigation, so you know where to look in your GA4 account, um, and some basic uses for you as well. Uh, also keep in mind, there is the chat feature in Zoom. So if you have questions as we go along at the end of the presentation, if I do have time, I'm more than happy to do a Q&A or stick around for um, a little bit of a longer Q&A. Also, another note is just that this presentation will be recorded and emailed out afterwards. So you can feel free to share it with your team or reference it in the future. And if you do not know, um, my name is Sarah, Sarah Simones. I am the head of strategy and training at Cause Inspired. I do uh, account level management, enterprise level account management at cause, but a huge part of my job is also internal training and structured support for our marketing operations team. Um, if you don't know what cause inspired is we are a full service digital marketing agency for nonprofits, so we do everything from websites to SEO um, to our specialty, which is Google ad grant management. <clears throat> um, and I think that if there's one thing I want to let you know just before we dive into it is that I've helped a lot of nonprofits navigate Google Analytics over the years. Um, I will say Google Analytics is one thing that I came into the industry personally as very self taught and then kind of learned the hard way as I went on year over year, getting to work with experts in Google Analytics. Um, when GA4 actually came out in 2020, which we'll talk a little bit about as web and app, uh, it was something I at first was <laughs> kind of afraid of, didn't really want to dive into. So these past uh, 13 months of my learning have been really, really helpful. And I'm excited to share with you all today uh, everything that I have for GA4. And that being said, I just want to give you an overview of the session agenda that we have in mind. Uh, first, I want to go over a brief introduction talking about how we got here. Um, why we're switching to GA4, what is GA4. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a comparison, GA4 versus universal analytics. And then we're just gonna go ahead and dive into installation. For the installation section, if you have not created a GA4 yet, please feel free to um, follow along with me. I will be creating a new one live. Um, and then I will also be showing you the setup for that. After that, we're gonna go into navigation. I'm going to walk you through each of the sections of GA4. So the reporting tab, the acquisition tab, show you where to find your page views, show you where to measure your conversions, all of that fun stuff. And then I'm going to do it in real time with you. So another great opportunity, if you have access to a GA4 or if you have already created one, go ahead and pull it up and feel free to follow along to my voice. Or if you have two screens, you can see them side by side. And then after that, we're going to wrap everything up with a fun little GA4 metrics cheat sheet. So I've got some vocab words for you with definitions. Um, I'm going to talk about how you can view your own performance in GA4, answer some hard hitting questions from how to view my conversion performance to my landing page performance. And then along with that conversion performance, we're going to kind of wrap it all up with talking a little bit about conversion tracking, although this is not an advanced session. So we won't deep dive into that. All right, so how did we get here? Um, the first thing I'll say is that if you did not know, on July 1st, 2023, uh, Universal Analytics as you know it, so just the regular Universal Analytics is actually going away. This is unless you have Google Analytics 360, that is going to last until October of next year. Um, as Universal Analytics goes away, we've already got the next generation of Google Analytics, which is called GA4. 
And if you feel like this is a really big change for you, just want to kind of uh, let you know that this is actually not the first time this has happened. Google has had actually, this is the fourth evolution, hence why it's called GA4. Um, so they've had three other evolutions of the platform since the start in 2005, when it was formerly known as Urchin from Google. Um, after that, it was evolved into classic Google Analytics, which uh, was still usable for quite some time. And uh, after that, they evolved again in 2012 to Universal Analytics, had several updates. And then in 2020, uh, what you might not know is that Google Analytics 4 kind of soft launched in 2020. So it's actually been out for a couple of years now. If you're thinking, well, I just learned in 2022 or 2021 that I had to switch, that is because it used to be called Web and App. Um, and essentially, the goal here was to be able to see your website performance alongside your app performance uh, with GA4. So that's a huge feature that it has. So the next generation of analytics, what is GA4? At its very core, GA4 is just an updated version of universal analytics. I'm sure that we all know that. Um, but it does have two really big uh, portions of it that I would say are very unique from regular universal analytics. The first is that it's focused on privacy. Uh, it does include a lot of privacy controls. It's designed for the future of privacy on the internet and it's adaptable for the future of privacy on the internet. Uh, and then the second is that it is very driven by artificial intelligence. It's very driven by predictive uh, analytics. So this is uh, using items like Google signals and forecasting to predict how your potential performance could be if certain changes are made or if um, certain seasons are passed, all of those different things. So we'll get to talk a bit about that as well. And in line with that, I wanna go ahead and give you a bit of a comparison. If you know Universal Analytics very well, then this is probably gonna be the most meaningful part to you. What does it have and what doesn't it have uh, versus UA and GA4? Custom reporting, uh, Universal Analytics has a custom reporting tab. GA4 does have custom reporting. You can edit um, tons of different reports in GA4. You can change your metrics to filter for specific traffic and specific reports. There have actually been some really nice recent updates with that. Create and change events inside of the platform. This is something that is unique to GA4. In analytics, you can do advanced tracking, but it's pretty much solely through Google Tag Manager or other platforms that you're going to have to import those events in. Uh, GA4 is the first event-based platform from Google uh, where you can actually view actions that are being completed on your website and edit them live right there in the platform. Uh, user demographics and interest reporting. I added this in here because I've heard a lot of, of folks over the past couple of months tell me that GA4 does not have interest uh, reporting or demographic information, and it totally does. It actually has really good interest reporting. You just have to enable it. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how to enable that in your GA4 account. Built-in conversion attribution. So which channels are driving you the most traffic? Where are those users coming from? Um, and how did they move through each of your channels to get to your site? Now, Universal Analytics does have conversion attribution. It has model comparison tool, but not at the same level as GA4. So although I put an X here, I wish I could kind of do a half and half because it has some elements of built-in conversion attribution, just not to the level of GA4 where we have really cool conversion pathing. And then finally, filtered views. This is probably going to be one of the biggest changes that you'll experience in GA4. There are not several views that you can uh, create at a view level. The view level is gone, actually. You'll be working exclusively in what's called a data stream. And on that note, let's go ahead and get started with installation. Feel free to screenshot this slide if you want. This is also recorded. We do also have um, resources on our web website, causeinspiredmedia.com. We have a living GA4 uh, resource page. And I'm just gonna walk you through today how you can get started with your setup. And then I'm gonna actually set up a GA4 live with you. 
Um, that being said, you kind of have to decide initially where you are right now with your universal analytics. If you do not have universal analytics installed on your website and you are looking to get started with Google Analytics today with GA4, you're going to create a brand new account. So this is you right here, create a new Google Analytics account. If you do already have universal analytics, you do not need to delete it. You don't have to lose any of that information. You're just going to go ahead and use your current Google Analytics account. The next step from both of those will be creating a new property. Automatically, that property is going to be a GA4. You have to work really hard right now if you do not want to set up a GA4. Um, if you have Google Tag Manager installed on your website, my preferred and recommended way of installing GA4 is through Tag Manager. Um, or you also have the option to install it directly on your website through an integration. So I'm going to go ahead here and minimize this. And in here, you can see that I have loaded in to the Cause Inspired GA4. Kirsten, can you give me a thumbs up if this is showing correctly? Awesome. Thank you. So um, let's pretend right here, this is my account. These are my properties that I wanna go ahead and create a new GA4 property within my account. All I'm going to do is go down to admin in the bottom left. Um, with the correct permissions, you can go ahead and click create property here. Uh, I'll go ahead and create one from the account level actually. So let's say I want to name my account. It'll be called example. You can read through these data sharing um, options here and choose them as you see fit. Go ahead and click next. After that, you're going to name your property. I typically like to name my property after the name of my website. Make sure you choose your time zone, um, where you are located, and what currency that you use. If you really wanted to go out of your way to make a universal analytics property, you can do that here through hide advanced options or show advanced options. But if that's not the case, just go ahead and click next. Fill out your business information as you see fit. Go ahead and select create. Accept these terms and conditions as you see fit as well. And then at this point, you are in what's called setup assistant. So this is going to help you out with your setup process. Um, you're going to go ahead and start by setting up your first data stream. Um, most of you all are going to be setting these up for websites. So you'll select web, and then you can go ahead and put in your website URL. You want to go ahead and keep enhanced measurement on. This is something that's going to come into play later. Enhanced measurement is what gives us the ability to do the event tracking inside of the platform. So really important for us. You can click this edit wheel here to turn specific things on and off. Um, although I would recommend just starting off with everything go ahead and click create stream. And now you've got a couple of options. The first option is to install GA4 directly onto your website. You can do that just by scrolling down here to the bottom. You can view tag instructions, and then you can click install manually and you can copy this code here. And if you're very motivated, go ahead and install it on every single page of your site. That will definitely work. Um, if you have a website builder like WordPress or Drupal, Monster Insights, you can actually select an integration directly from here, and that will work as well. Or if you use Google Tag Manager, um, all you need to do is log in to your Google Tag Manager account, go ahead and select tags right here, create a new tag, select tag configuration, choose GA4 configuration, and then it's gonna ask you for your measurement ID. And you'll notice right here at the top, you've got a nice little copy button where it says measurement ID. Go ahead and copy that in. Oops, paste. And then the trigger for this is going to be all pages. You want GA4 firing on all of your pages. Go ahead and add that in. Uh, name it something like GA4 page views, save and submit. Once you click submit, your GA4 will be live and should look something like this. All right. So we're gonna get back to the presentation here and we will go back to our GA4 um, when we're ready to go over uh, some more navigation. But for now, let's go ahead and discuss some elements of navigation. 
I also do just want to kind of reiterate again, I totally recognize I'm going fast through a part of this. There's lots to go over. So definitely feel free to put questions in chat as we go along and I will take time after this to answer them. Okay. The first section of GA4 is cleverly named reports. Um, you definitely can grab reports from this section, although I would kind of view this as your updated version of acquisition audience and behavior. This is really where you're going to get information on real-time performance, where your audience is located in real time, when they're coming to your site in real time. This is also where you're gonna get snapshot information, kind of like a more improved version of a home page. Um, it's also where you're gonna see the life cycle of your users. <clears throat> You're going to see how you acquired them to your site, how they are engaging with your content, if they are completing events, what kind of events are they completing, how many times have they completed them. You'll also see your e-commerce performance here, how many purchases have they made, um, those transactions, all of that good stuff if you have it set up. And then you'll also be able to get information on retention here as well. Are you retaining your users? Are you bringing in return users or new users? Excuse me. <clears throat> Um, also in the report section, you're getting a lot of information on your users. Um, so you're getting demographic information here, location, gender, interest, and language. And then you're also getting tech information. So what kind of devices they are coming in to your um, site using, what operating systems. So reports is really important. We'll go over that live. The second section you'll see here is explore and explore feels more like a classic reporting section. It's where you can actually create reports, use templates to explore all different types of really cool questions. So this is where you go when you want to answer the question, uh, what is my user journey even look like? So you can explore user cases and in industry by acquisition, conversions, the behavior of your users, your e-commerce performance. We'll definitely do some deep diving here. And then there's the advertising section, possibly the section I use the most as someone who is um, an account strategist. When you're looking at this area, you definitely want to keep in mind um, what kind of conversions you already have enabled in your account. If that feels foreign to you, you're like, I don't know what that means to enable conversions. Don't worry, I will definitely show you how to do that today. Um, but basically you can mark an event as a conversion within your Google Analytics account, your GA4 account, and you can view all of the touch points that a user might have had along the way as they continue. So in this screenshot here, you can see that I have selected a conversion. Um, I believe the conversion was like a, a PDF download here, although I can't 100% tell. And I can see the touch points for my PDF download. If they came into the site for the first time through organic search, a lot of folks did, but their second touch point to my site or their midway touch point to my site tended to be through email and organic search. And then their later touch points right before they completed that PDF download, uh, they completed that conversion for me, was mostly direct and organic search as well really good indicators for me on what channels to prioritize and which channels I should be using to acquire new users for the very first time and which channels I should be using to nurture my existing users. Also, we've got a classic model comparison tool, just like we had in Universal Analytics. If that's something you used a lot in UA, um, it is definitely still here. All right. The next section goes hand in hand with that. This is configure. Configure is basically where you're doing your goal tracking, your conversion tracking. You can view your raw event data here. You can create custom events here. You can create custom dimensions and metrics as well. Um, and then you're able to see that performance live in real time, or you can see that performance in your measurement section under the reports tab. So configure, uh, for lack of a better word, is really where you configure what you want to track. Um, we'll be able to do that live, but also it's something that you definitely want to take time to think through um, as you optimize your GA4. And then after that, I'm going to take you through the admin section. We've kind of already dabbled there at the beginning of the presentation because admin 
um, was how you set up your GA4 account. There are some pretty interesting things in here. I wanna show you how you can grab your um, GA4 measurement ID in case you ever need it for an integration. I wanna show you how you can view your data streams here as well. You can also set up cross-domain tracking at this level too. Um, so that is important to keep in mind. And then wrapping up this table of contents overview for each section here, um, data streams. There is a lot that you can do in data streams. One thing I kind of already mentioned, which would be enabling options to track more deeply um, the demographics of your audience. You can also edit your conversion events as they come in if you want them to sound different or to look different in the account. And this is also where you will uh, deep dive that cross domain tracking. All right, so let's go ahead and do that together. And really quick, I just got to go back to where I was earlier. Perfect. And let's get started. So the only thing I mentioned, or the only thing I didn't mention when I was going through the, the breakdown of each of these tabs is the home page. Um, also, in case I didn't say it, if you have a GA4 account, go ahead, feel free to pull it up and follow along with me. But the only page I didn't mention initially was the home page. I'm personally not a big homepage user. It has a lot of good information. I will say GA4 has more specific information on the homepage. You can get high level updates on um, your increase in users, new users, engagement time, event count, all of that stuff. Just remember, if you ever grab data from the homepage, you need to always make sure that you're changing your date range here. It auto pulls for the last seven days and not a lot of good decisions are, are made with just seven days of data. So make sure you're using the homepage pretty cautiously. It'll also tell you what you recently viewed and it'll give you some insights and recommendations. Remember at the beginning of the presentation, I talked a lot about how one of the things that sets GA4 apart from um, other versions of Google Analytics is truly because of its automation. So let's go ahead and dive into reports. This is gonna be the biggest section for us today. Um, reports has a lot of info. We've got an initial snapshot page. This is um, editable. You can edit your snapshot page just by clicking customize report here. You can export this page as a report if you wanna share it with any of your stakeholders just by clicking the share this report option right here. Um, you can also edit comparisons that you're seeing in here or you can click the insights button here and get uh, direct questions that you might have answered from a GA4 AI, essentially. This is important for me to show you, especially knowing that we have a lot of nonprofits in the chat right now, because oftentimes you're wearing multiple hats. There's probably not enough space left in your head to think of how I can pull my top page views by screen in GA4. So when in doubt, if you're feeling lost, go to your insights questions or your insights section here. See if your question is here. Um, and if it is great, you can click through right on it and it'll take you to the section where you need to go. Um, so snapshot is really fun. Real time is very interesting in comparison to universal analytics. It really focuses on the map. I think this can be very cool if you've got press releases, if you're doing e-blasts, if you've done some sort of maybe traditional marketing in your area and you want to see how it is currently affecting your performance. So you can actually zoom in using this increase and decrease button here. Um, you can hover over these specific areas. We're located in St. Augustine, Florida, so we can see that we've got a big section here of um, maybe some folks on our website, looks like just two. And then we can also see elsewhere um, around the US that we are also getting views on our site right now. If I scroll down, I can see how these users made it to my site, if they Googled us, if they were direct, um, and what pages they're going to, and what events are being triggered from those pages. But all of this is in real time. So this is really only important if you want to view how something is affected, if you're trying to measure an event in real time, things along those lines. Um, 
The next section here is we're going to move into something called the life cycle. So as we go through these next three areas, acquisition, engagement, and monetization, think a lot about your user journey on the site. Uh, these are really where you're going to get those answers to your questions of what is your user doing when they land on your homepage? Are they bouncing? Well, we'll talk about bounce right here in a second. Um, but the first area is acquisition. So you can choose to go to acquisition overview. It feels like a snapshot page. Um, I personally don't get a lot of value from here, but it can be nice if you're looking for quick information. The next two sections here are way more in line with universal analytics and for me easier to read just because of that history. But you have to kind of make a decision. Do you want to view how you acquired users on your site based on their experience, so who they are, or do you want to view how you acquired users on your site based on what traffic channel brought them there? Let's go ahead and start with a user acquisition. This is going to answer the question, the first time a user came to your site, what channel brought them there? It's very user-centric. How many new users? Um, questions along those lines, this is really where you're going to find that info. Make sure you're changing your date range in the top right hand corner as you view this information so that way it's valuable to you. But immediately right here, the first thing I want you to do is explore this drop down section. First user default channel grouping is what it's going to come to, but you can also pull source medium in here. If you wanna see if your Google uh, cost per click ads are working, you're gonna see Google CPC. You can see that we do get some referrals from Google support because we're linked there as a certified professional. This is really great because we can see those clicks from Google support to our website. Uh, we can also see how many users we're getting from Bing versus Google or how many users are just going directly to our website. Also on this section, you're getting some interesting vocab. We'll go over this in more detail on my cheat sheet section but it's going to tell you a couple of different things in comparison to what Universal Analytics would tell you. And Universal Analytics, you're gonna care about bounce rate and time on page. In GA4, you're gonna care more about engagement rate and engagement time. So your engagement rate actually measures the percentage of folks, excuse me, that were engaged on your site. It's very similar to a bounce rate in many ways, just a little less broken. Um, and then your engagement time is going to measure the, essentially the session duration for you, except it starts either after they have been on your site for 10 seconds or had an interaction on your website. So that way it makes sure it's not counting like a bunch of people that maybe just misclicked or bought traffic or bad traffic, any of those things. These are very focused um, and I would say valuable metrics to consider. Traffic acquisition is the other question to ask yourself. If you don't really care about the user journey right now, you just wanna show your stakeholders how your Facebook account is performing, how your social is performing in general, how your organic search is, this is the section for you. Also here, I want you all to make sure you're clicking on these drop downs. Look at your session source medium, look at just your source or maybe even just your campaign names. You don't have to just look at the default channel grouping. If that's not enough information for you, change it to source medium. That's where the drop down is. And now you can see how many users were brought in directly versus how many users were brought in organically. But we can also see that our organic users who find us by, you know, um, searching for us stay on the site a little bit longer than the users that we bring directly to our site. And they also tend to have more engaged sessions, even though there are less of them. So you can answer some really good questions in this section. Moving on to engagement. Engagement's going to uh, coexist a lot with the configure section down here, but questions you can be answering on the engagement uh, section are, uh, any questions regarding your page views, this is where you get your, your page view uh, info. You can also answer questions regarding how folks are converting on your website, if they're completing conversions, if they're completing events. So we know that GA4 has a lot of built-in event tracking, um, but really quick before we go into that, this overview page, super helpful. You've got your views by page title, what events are being completed, some nice little graphs. Just remember, you can always export this. This is a good place to do that. But let's go ahead and take a look at the events section here. 
Um, these are the built-in events that come in with GA4. If you haven't explored it yet, you've probably heard a lot of people talk about these built-in events. Um, not all of them are like really unique and I would say super valuable. Some of them are as simple as like they started a session on your website. So for something like that, you know, a session is going to start like 99.9% .9 of the time. That's maybe not an event that you'd want to turn into a conversion. But something like a file download could be really impactful for you if you have specific files on your site that you want people to be downloading or if you've got a specific um, page on your site that you want people to be viewing or an item that you want people to be clicking here. All of those areas uh, you can definitely track with GA4 and you can really view in this events section. But we're going to come back to that. Moving on to pages and screens here, this is where you're going to view your page performance. So um, a big pickle, I would say, that we were in initially with GA4 was this process of as soon as I log in and I look at my pages, it's showing me the page titles. And I don't always know what the titles of my pages are. Like, that's not really helpful for me. So once again, you can switch out of page title just by clicking this drop down here. And I would actually recommend you look at page path. I'm a page path kind of person. Um, I like to be able to copy it, paste it right in my URL and know exactly what I'm looking at. This is something that I've just found is a really valuable hack. And at this point, I wanna to introduce to you um, secondary dimensions, excuse me. Okay, you may or may not have noticed, but through all of these sections here, we have had this blue plus sign. This blue plus sign actually gives us the ability to add on secondary dimensions so we can view two things at once. Really important if someone on your team says, you know, yeah, well, the uh, home page performs really well, but social doesn't drive any traffic there. Um, this is a great point where you can go in here and you can search for channel. Um, remember, you have to kind of make that decision if you want to look at channels from the user perspective or the traffic perspective. Let's just choose session to look at it from the traffic perspective. And immediately here, I can start to see okay, I do get some um, homepage performance from my organic search and my direct, but it's pulling up the secondary dimension for every single page on my site, which is not what you want. So at this point, you're gonna use the search function right here to um, filter your results. So that way you can see the exact page that you want to view. We just wanna view our homepage. So I'm just gonna put in a backslash here and then hit enter. <clears throat> and doing that every single page actually has a backslash. So let me choose a better example. Um, let's choose our Get Google Grant Today page. There we go, oops. We're gonna go ahead and hit enter again. Awesome. So now I can see our Get Google Ad Grant Today page has had 167 views from direct. That makes sense. This is a direct link that we give people. It would be kind of hard to find organically. Um, and it has three views organically. So you can search here and then also add on that secondary dimension to really define what you wanna see. If you have blogs on your site and you just wanna type in the word blog and pull up every blog page and all of those channels, that's an option as well, then you can really get a better idea of how things are performing. You can do this by demographics, where folks are located, um, the time that they've spent on your site, if they're a new user, if they're an old user, um, all of that good stuff. So that is your pages and screens section. Monetization, I won't deep dive into. We don't have e-commerce set up for our GA4. That's definitely something that is a little bit more advanced. If you do have e-commerce set up on your website, like WooCommerce, um, Shopify, platforms along those lines, I definitely would reach out to them and uh, get an idea of what their integrations look like. Part of the reason why I recommend using Google Tag Manager to install GA4 is because Google Tag Manager can easily be used to connect GA4 to other properties as well and vice versa. So um, yeah, definitely take some time to look at that. And at that point, we're gonna go ahead and click down here to the retention section. And retention is a good spot if you just kind of like a broad graph or line chart here 
on how your users have uh, come and left your site, have come to your site for the first time and have left your site. So how many new users you have versus return users, this is a really great place to answer that question. How many users you're retaining every cohort. Um, I have a client who personally really likes uh, line charts like this, and it's something that's hard to pull in our reporting software. Um, and I think that this is like the perfect page to answer questions. How am I performing quarter over quarter? Are we trending up? Are we trending down? So <clears throat> definitely take a look there. After that, we've got our demographic information. Here we can see our demographic overviews in terms of um, where our users are located, what language they're speaking, but you'll notice here that we actually can't see gender, interest, or age. And that is because in this account, we do not have demographics enabled. I will show you how to enable them. Um, but if this looks familiar to you, that's okay. Uh, we're gonna show you how to enable that today. You can also deep dive your demographic details here. If you want to search by country, region, city, language, age, gender, or those interests. Uh, tech overview can also be fun to look at if you wanna view your mobile versus your desktop performance, um, or if you want to view which operating system's working the best, Great for making decisions when it comes to running ads. Should you be focusing your ads on iOS or Android? Um, all of those kind of questions can really be answered in your tech overview section. Okay, next up is explore. So explore feels very much so, like I said earlier, the classic version of reporting in universal analytics. Um, but it is actually quite different. So Explore comes with a template gallery. And, you know, I'm typically not a big template person. I like to start from scratch, but I would totally recommend using these templates. They are, they're really nice and they actually have a lot of good information in them. So in here, right off the bat, you can use some of their templates for user funnel exploration. If you want to explore your user's journey on your website, path exploration, if you want to view which channels have brought a user to complete a specific conversion, you can view um, segment overlap. So if you have a certain two different audiences that overlap with a specific demographic or interest, and if you keep going down here, you can get some good use cases for acquisition, conversion, and user behavior. Um, I really like this user lifetime one as well. Um, once you have like a year of data, I would say it's really fun to use to look back on to see how your users have retained on the site. Uh, for today, I'll go ahead and pull an acquisition report right here. So the first thing that's going to happen when you pull your acquisition report is it's going to go ahead and let you know um, what kind of dimensions and metrics you're working with here on the left, as well as your segments. And you can kind of create the visualizations that you want to by moving through the visualization chart here. So I'm gonna use this pie graph because um, it's pretty to look at. And down here at the bottom, I can see that I've got my channels. So these are actually my sources. They're very specific. They tell me when a user is coming from Facebook versus Google or like Gmail and Google in general. And I can kind of see the percentage of my active users that are working through here. I don't have enough time to go through and pull a bunch of different types of reports, but if you do this enough, you'll eventually find something that you really like to look at for a dimension. You can even add in other dimensions here if you wanna replace this with like um, country. And then you can see the majority of our users come to our site from the United States. Um, we do also get a portion that come from Canada, Australia, the UK, India, China, tons of good info here. Um, you can also pull this by medium too. So if you're simply trying to answer the question if cost per click versus referral versus email versus um, organic work, then this is a good place to do that as well. When you pull this report, you can directly share it with a coworker. Um, you can share it in read-only mode. You can share it to uh, pretty much anyone with this link. And, or you can also export your data just by choosing that. I like exporting the data to Google Sheets because it makes it easy, less stuff to download on my computer, but you can also download it directly as a PDF. Right. 
So that is the explore section. I hope you learned something maybe a little bit new in that area. It's definitely very, very deep, um, but it feels pretty user-friendly, kind of like Data Studio or Looker Studio as they call it now, uh, just on the opposite side of the screen. So everything's on your left-hand side. All right, now let's look at the advertising snapshot. I said earlier, I spend a lot of my time here. It is definitely true. This is really where you're gonna get information on your conversions. Um, actually, before we dive into here, let's go ahead and talk about conversions first, because I think that'll make this section more meaningful. So skipping down to your configure section here, the first area you're going to land um, will be your events. On your events section, you're going to notice you've got quite a few things coming up. If you've had your account up and running for, I would like to say at least a week, maybe two weeks. Um, file downloads, we can see when users are scrolling, we've got when they're having their first visit, when they're clicking on an item, um, and you can just go ahead and mark these things as conversions. So for file download, when I toggle it on so it's blue, the system knows that that is an important conversion for us. Um, if I go down here to custom definitions, you can actually create some definitions to get more information on what kind of files people are downloading. So you can create a custom definition here. And the first thing I would do is select this drop down menu for event parameter. And you can see all different types of stuff here like file name, file extension, uh, link classes, if you're tracking outbound link clicks or what the link text was on a specific click. Um, all you have to do to save these in your account is go ahead and click on them, name your dimension. I just name it the same exact thing because it's easy for me. You can add a description if you want and then save it. And now when you go to your report section here and you look at your engagement, your events, you can search specifically like file download here. So you can just look at file downloads. And then when you go to add your secondary dimension under custom, you'll have the ability to select file name. I just added this in. I wanted to do it live with you all today. Um, and I don't have an account that I can share that already has this information in there, um, but that is how it works. That's how you can get more deep information on your event section. The configure area is definitely a good place to explore. Perhaps we'll do a more, um, a deep dived webinar for that in Q1 or two of 2023. So definitely stay tuned. Um, but that is a lot of information for today. The main thing that I want you to know is that if you see something valuable here, file download, a click, a scroll, a session start, mark it as a conversion. That way when you use a section like advertising, popping back here, you can actually pull up your conversion paths, up here in the left, you can check what conversion you want to view, like a file download. We've only had one, so this is a perfect example. Um, go ahead and save that. And now I can see the one file download we had, what was their first touch point that they had, their, their midway touch point, and then their later touch points. This is all automatically using a data-driven attribution model which is automated to give you the best information every step of the way, according to Google. If you prefer a different type of attribution model, like I wanna give 100% of the credit to the last thing a user clicked on, then you can choose last click and it will change that. If you want something a little bit more linear, so you wanna give credit to every single channel a user clicked on as they made their way to complete the conversion, you can choose something like linear. And, and give a little bit of that credit um, more fairly across the account. Okay, sorry, I'm doing a lot of talking. So the next area here is the model comparison tool. Feels very similar to the model, model comparison tool in universal analytics. If you use that a lot, awesome. I frankly think that conversion pathing is a better version of this, but um, it's definitely still valuable. So remember to select your events up here in the top left that you wanna track. And now you can compare two models. So when I choose last click, organic search gets 100% of the credit. When I choose something like first click, and let me broaden this up so it makes a little bit more sense. 
and just choose all of them. Well, organic search still seems to get 100% of the credit. Maybe something linear will have a different model. There we go. So when I choose linear and I compare against the two, I can see that linear actually has um, more conversions for, uh, slightly more conversions for our referral channel. So maybe referral is something that helps my user a little bit along the way. All right. We're running close on time here. So wrapping up the configure section, I already talked about marking those conversions. Once you mark them, you can view them here in the conversion section. Not a lot of reasons to do that, um, but an important place to view them individually if you'd like to. You can also create audiences here, and this is great for remarketing in Google Ads. This is exactly where you do that. You can select a new audience and you can create them using suggested audiences from Google Analytics, GA4, or you can create a custom audience. Uh, maybe you just want to remarket to everyone who landed on your homepage. That's totally an option. Here you can see we do have built-in audiences. We've got one built-in of all users. So at any time we can remarket to all of our users in Google Ads. All right, wrapping up the live navigation here, I'm gonna go over the admin section. So admin section is pretty simple to navigate. It feels very similar. The only thing to keep in mind is that you're missing your view section. So, and you have something called data streams. So if you ever wanna view your measurement ID, go ahead and select your data stream. You just click right on it, and then you can copy that measurement ID. You can also go down here and modify tons of different things. So you can view your tag instructions if you ever need to grab that, that manual G tag right here. You can manage connected sites if you wanted to um, set up cross domain tracking. That's where you go ahead and get that started. Um, if you want to configure specific items on your tag setting, also configure your domains for cross domain tracking. There's a good section for you to do that there. If you want to create custom events, like when someone reaches a specific page, like the thank you page, there you go. Um, or if you want to modify existing events, so you want to change what it means to download a file, you also have that option right here. If you want to turn off those built-in enhanced measurements, it's never too late to do that. You can, although I don't recommend it. Um, and in a very quick way, that's everything you can do in your data stream. Now you also have this section here for data settings. And if you click data collection, the first items you're going to see here is Google Signals data collection. This is important to do if you wanna see demographic information. What you're going to do to get this started is click get started. It will take you into a separate section where you need to read through these items, how it collects data specifically, make sure that your privacy policy reflects this stuff and then select continue. At that point, your account is enabled to view demographic information. Um, I would do it live right now, um, but that is actually not within my jurisdiction for costs. So I will leave that to the team that manages this account. Um, also in data settings, you can view how long you want to retain your data, if you want to retain it for two months, or if you want to retain it for 14 months. Um, GA4 is not in the market of keeping data forever and ever. That's really not something that's super big on it. So keep in mind that a lot of your event data does not live forever in GA4. And then the last item here I want to show you are your data filters. I think this will be really meaningful for anyone who used to create filtered views. Um, this is essentially a version where you can have filtered views. You can create different types of data filters here for internal traffic if you want to exclude IP addresses, things along those lines. Okay. That was my uh, the fastest I could go through a GA4 navigation while also wanting to make sure I give you guys some time to look at basic uses for GA4. And before I do that, let's go ahead and dive into this cheat sheet for different types of um, metrics that we have in GA4. The first one I'm gonna tell you about is called an engaged session. An engaged session uh, is going to measure the number of sessions that have lasted longer than 10 seconds, like I said earlier, or if a user has had more than two page views. Um, 
or if they have completed a conversion on your site. So a session does not start in GA4 or an engaged session does not start in GA4 until a user has kind of proven themselves as engaged. That's really important to remember. And that is why engagement rate, which takes the percentage of all or takes the number of all of the sessions you possibly got on your site and it divides it by the number of engaged sessions that you got equals kind of your replacement for bounce rate here because this is the percentage of engaged sessions. So instead of bounce rate, look to engagement rate to really determine if your landing pages are successful. You also have engagement time, which does the same exact thing. It'll tell you how long a user has been on your site once they were engaged. So that could be not including the 10 seconds they were there before that engagement timer started. Events, those are tracking all of the actions that you saw on your site. Um, user acquisition, like we said earlier, this is how you acquired a user for the first time on your site versus traffic acquisition is how you acquired a session on your site. So you can think about user acquisition is for unique users, traffic acquisition is for any session. All right, so let's talk about different ways to measure success. I've got three things I'm gonna go over with you here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and dive into the first one, traffic. So I've got three questions here for you that you might be asked at one point in time while you're managing a GA4. How many users are coming to your website? Easiest way to answer that question is to go to user acquisition, look at all your new users right here at the top. I could quickly answer that question and say in the last 28 days, we've had 1,866 users come to our site. Then they might ask well, what kind of users are coming to your site. At that point, you would click this highlighted section, demographics or tech, and you can tell them we have users from this age range, typically this gender, um, on this device, with this operating system, things along those lines. And then the last question here is which channel is bringing the most traffic to your website? At that point, I would click traffic acquisition and then look at the number one channel right here. And I would be able to say, okay, it's organic search. They have brought the most users to my site in the last 30 days. Next, conversions. Here are some good questions you might want answered about conversions. What actions are users completing when they come to your site? So glad you asked. As you know, this is in the events section under configure right here. And we can see that users are completing clicks, file downloads, first visits, session starts, scrolls. You can pull those specific numbers. You can pull different date ranges for this. You can even mark these as conversions and then click to the conversion section to get more info on that. And then what actions are the most valuable for users to complete and how many of those were completed? This is really where you get into that deep dive of custom definitions. If you've added in a custom definition for file name or page name, a page title, anything along those lines, you can view the event performance next to that um, and use that to kind of inform how users are performing when they come to your site. And wrapping it up here, uh, so we have enough time for questions at the end. We have pages. So if someone ever asks you, um, you know, which landing pages are the most effective and are supporting that user journey, you can easily click pages and screens right here, change that drop dropdown from page title and screen class to page path, landing page, whatever feels most comfortable there for you. And then you can click this export button up at the top and share that with them. That's a great spot. So that way you can evaluate which pages are performing the best. Um, and then the second question here is which pages on your website are the most important and are getting the most views? So this one's a little bit more subjective. It's totally up to you to decide um, how you value importance. For me, I would use engagement time and engagement rate. So the rate at which a user was engaged on that specific page versus how long they actually stayed. And from this analysis, I would say one of our most important pages on the site is meet your team. Like that makes total sense for cause. Oftentimes when we start working with a new client, they might wanna see what their strategist looks like or what their hobbies are or how long they've been here before they hop on a call. So the meet your team page is a great place to start that. Definitely an easy way to measure which page is the most valuable. 
And with about five minutes left for questions, I just wanna thank you all today so, so much for bearing with me. I know this was a lot of information. I really hope you got something valuable out of it. Um, please keep in mind that this is a recorded session, so we can definitely, and we will be sending out the recording afterwards. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us directly on our website at causeinspiredmedia.com. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send them in the chat or unmute and I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> awesome. I really appreciate the compliments you all. If I have GA4 set up, okay. Thank you, Dave, for asking a question. If I have GA4 set up and I do, when I log in, will it take me there or no? Uh, yes, Dave, if it's attached to your Google account, your GA4, uh, when you log into Google Analytics, it will definitely take you there. Let me see if I can resume my screen share. There we go. Um, just remember to click this top left section right here, Dave, and you'll see all of your properties that you have access to, and GA4 will be one of them. Awesome. Thanks again for joining everyone. No problem. Um, any other questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. I'll be here for the next four minutes, but if nothing comes up, I hope that you have, is there going to be a webinar on demographics? Um, we could, we could look into that. We've been talking a little bit about maybe doing a more advanced webinar on GA4 since this was like our basics course. Um, in Q1 or two of 2023. I think that could definitely be on the horizon. Demographics in GA4 are really fun to pull with Google Signals. It's actually kind of nice because it infers a lot. It's really where some of that automation comes into play. Also, thank you, Dave. I will get some oxygen. <laughs> Doesn't help that I had allergies all day today too. <laughs> Oh, great question. If you're working with Cause Inspired, how much will your strategist help set up GA4? Pretty much 100% as long as you're going through Tag Manager. If you're going through Tag Manager, we set up GA4 for you 100%. Um, we just need the correct permissions in your account. And um, that has been one of our 2022 goals. We really aim by the end of 2022 to make sure all of our clients have GA4 set up on their site. So definitely reach out to your strategist, let them know that you're interested and make sure they have the correct permissions to build that out for you. And we can do it through Google Tag Manager. If you don't have Google Tag Manager on your website, still reach out to your strategist. We are happy to help you out. We've got easy links that we can uh, send you if you wanna try a self-install. Um, and then we also have a web developer with like 15 plus years of experience who is amazing and can do pretty much anything. So uh, I think we have a package solution for that as well. All right, two minutes left. Any other questions? Okay. Well, if there are no other questions for today, thank you all again for joining. I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead. Goodbye.